Snappy. Findthebestcarprice.com has bought us... No. <laughs> <laughs> no promo. Not in this video. I'm only kidding. Wow. All right, Dad, we're back. That was half a promo. That was half a promo. <laughs> yeah. Then we'll get half payment. Okay. All right, we're back. We're getting cocky. We got we to gotta come back to our roots, our humble beginnings, our really shitty video quality. The okay. Good old days. Okay. We're back. We're back. All right. Yeah. So here's what we're talking about. We're getting the used car market report out of the way today at this very moment because we have some very timely news from a friend of a friend, a friend of the show. A friend of the show. A friend yeah. of the show. Yeah. 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 Chris. Yeah. Chris called this morning. Um, you know, Chris would love to phone in and be a part of this, but, well, his boss suggested that perhaps that wouldn't be the best thing for him to do. So you're not going to hear his the dulcet tones of Mr. Chris, but I can report to you that he called me this morning, um, and he thinks, he thinks that used car wholesale prices might have just about peaked because... He said, you know, we're starting to look at 110 to 115 percent of... Are you of, serious? Yeah, yeah. And of man, of the uh, yeah, Mannheim... Uh, market record. Market market. And, and, and it's like, how do you buy them? How, and who are you selling them to after you buy them? He says, I, I know, like, for instance, Toyota, they know the situation in Toyota Finance. Even though the cars are overpriced, they'll, they'll finance them for, us, for our customers. But... He thinks they, they've peaked. He thinks the pricing has peaked, yeah. the wholesale pricing has peaked, and that we should finally be on the downward side of wholesale used car prices because, as Chris stated, it just doesn't really seem to be sustainable. Now, he said that this morning, I don't know, about 15 minutes after they announced that the GDP for the second quarter had dropped 33%, which was the largest GDP decline in the history of, well, probably human life. But that, um, but yeah. that GDP is forward. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll all be forward looking and looking forward to the Great Depression. Well, no, no, we'll knock on veneers that that yeah. doesn't happen. Um, did you not see the Cox Automotive news this morning as well? Uh, what the fact that they they have uh, trimmed their uh, they laid off fifteen hundred or so people. Sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred people, yeah. and a lot of them, I think it was like thirteen hundred, came out of the Mannheim division. Um, and not that that has anything directly to do with used car prices but no. i think it's it, it it kind of shines a light on the um, turbulence in that area of the market obviously hearing directly from chris this morning is about as close to the source as you can get and, and i didn't even call him yeah he called he yeah. called me um it's called and, having good friends yes yes and 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 he called to, to say that not only were the prices he 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 thought peaked and and might start coming down slightly but that demand at the dealership level has really leveled off. So let's let's talk about that for a little bit, if you don't mind, Dad, because I know you have friends in a lot of places, um, a yeah. lot of different dealerships. I have friends in high places and more friends in low places. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is this like, um, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but is this something you're starting to hear from more of your peers, that, hey, things, are, things were hot, things were sizzling, and now maybe we're down to a bit of a simmer? Or am I... Overextending. You know, I, I would. I, I would. I would just say that from what Chris is seeing in his group, that this is not the normal end of a month. They're just not seeing any activity. Things have just really, really leveled off. Um, and and you know I don't know. And he didn't know what the the reasons were for that. Um, some of it could be that that you know maybe it's really starting to sink in that there are some economic issues that the country faces um, and maybe they're just running out of people that had the wherewithal to actually go ahead and continue to buy cars and there's less of those people that are available to do that now yeah um, I mean you look at all the all the various indicators uh, first-time unemployment claims went up again for the second second week in a row. I mean, this if, if you continue down that path, eventually you run out of people that are qualified to be buying cars. Yeah. And and obviously not as many people are buying cars, but it, it's 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 from from the sense I got from Chris, it's like somebody turned off the spigot. Gotcha. So 
So I think, you know, we talked about in the video very recently the uh, new car supply side and the expectation, and we were ta we were quoting that automotive news article, yes. the expectation that supply is going to come back around towards the end of the year. Yes. So we have that as, as an impact or an indicator of what's going on. We have um, news about like defleeting um, within the rental car companies. Like, yes. So this week we had news from Hertz talking about the need to sell off 183,000 uh, uh, vehicles in their fleet between yes. now and the end of this year. Yes. Um, and then we have kind of more anecdotal evidence from the, from the ground, from people that are working in dealerships saying, yeah. okay, yeah, it feels like something's kind of changed. Yeah. You put all of that together, not to mention the government oriented things like will unemployment benefits continue to be the same that they had been and, and what's going to happen there and you have an election I mean there's just so many moving pieces it's still though to me that sounds like you wait until the end of the year you wait until some more of this plays out because prices are still considerably high especially on the used car side and it's not like the spigot may have been turned off but the the impact on my pocketbook or my checkbook it's still going to be a couple of weeks or at least months down the line before I see an impact. Yeah, is what I, I'm assuming. I, I, I would think that, that the longer you can wait to see what the future really is, what the impact of, of all these things yeah. really are, um, the better off you'll be. Without really having a complete understanding as to what the future may hold, yeah. might, might encourage you to make some decisions that turned out to be, well, the wrong decisions to be made because you just weren't playing with all the information you really needed. And, and in life, you that, know. That is life. Yeah, but, exactly. But, you but, never but, have. But you calculate. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You, you, you calculate based on past experiences. Now, the dilemma here is that there's very few people that are around. From the Spanish flu. That, that survived the last pandemic. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and if they did, if they are around, they wouldn't remember much anyway no, because no, I they'd be a hundred and two years old. No, I get your point, Dad. Yeah, and and I think our audience does as well. There's nothing to draw on, but no, it goes back to one of the principles you've talked about in many of our videos, uh, and we're filming I have principles. We're filming Deal School right now <laughs> in the midst of also our daily content, and and we just wrapped up a video for Deal School where you're talking about the best time to buy a car is when you don't need one. Yes, and you mean that you mean that in the sense that you shouldn't have this sense of urgency, like oh my car just got totaled, I have to go buy one. Yeah. And the reason I bring that up is because it's the same principle applies here. If you don't need one, that's great. You know, continue to kick the can a little bit. Not till you when you do need one and you're, you know, well, screwed. Kick, kick, kick the can a little bit, but but remind the dealers that you could be interested in doing something yeah. so that when they desperately need a sale. Which could be as soon as next month now yeah, that we're hearing that yeah, things are slow. So that, so that they then go, hey, I think it might be time to call Ray. I know he doesn't need a car. But Let's we need see. him. Yeah, we need to convince him it's time. You know, I want to bring up back to the Hertz thing, and I want okay. your take on this. Um, so they're defleeting. I mean, that's what it's called when they sell off cars. In this case, they're defleeting because obviously they're bankrupt. Um, they've run out of money. But Could annually, be a good reason to do it. Okay. Yeah, annually, it's important to know Hertz has been defleeting two hundred thousand vehicles per year yes. in the past few years. I mean, that's normal. The bigger, yeah, but they replace those cars. That's the bigger storyline. Yeah. So if you think about it, 183,000 vehicles are going to go out and be sold at auction to dealers, okay? There's 16, 16, call it 17, somewhere between 16 and 17,000 franchise car dealerships out there. Yes. So that does not include independent, you know, like the lots that you see when you're driving down, you know, your local highway. Even if just those franchise dealerships bought out those 183,000 vehicles, that represents 10 cars. 10 or 11 new used cars going into inventory at all those dealerships. And again, that doesn't include the 30, 40,000 independent dealers that are out there. When you start are to you look at Are you trying to suggest that it's really not that big of a deal? And Chris told us that when he was on the show, yes. what, like a month ago now? Yes. He said it's not going to even make a drop in the bucket. Yeah. And I started to research that a bit more because I was like, how could it not make a drop in the bucket? Hertz is huge. Hertz is huge. But they already 10, started defleeting earlier this year. It's 10 cars per dealership. Yeah. So it's not going to materially change their attitude. It might if no one's buying cars and they're desperate. Yes. So that's where, you know, it's, it's like, it's a little bit of calculus that you have to play. And you just have to understand and, you know, know what the impacts really are.
by the way, huh. I, I really did poorly in math in high school. <laughs> so, <laughs> calculus was, I, I can do car math, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I could work a lease in my head. You're damn I, good at car math. I could come up with a car payment for you in my head, but I couldn't do math. In yeah, my head. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the story stays the same. We'll have a new Mannheim report that comes out at the end of this month. Yes, and, to reflect. And, I, and I believe the end of this month is coming very soon. Yeah, we should have another video sometime next week yes. uh, talking about that. Um, so as we get more information, if we hear from more of your peers uh, mm -hmm. that things have kind of slowed down, then that yeah. becomes an indicator for all of you to be one step ahead of the well, broader market. I, I, I heard about a Mercedes-Benz store in in the Phoenix area, things were a little slower than they had been. That's what I was saying yeah. earlier when I was asking if your peers have told you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Things are slowing down. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, reality is setting in. Yeah. Yes. I think that's what it is ultimately. Why do you think I got a haircut? Reality set in. And speaking of haircuts. You're about to get one. I'm about to get one in an hour, folks. <laughs> so when you see me next week, I could look a whole hell of a lot. Well, not really. I'll look a little different. <laughs> Probably not as different as I managed to make no, it. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no. All right. Okay, I guess we beat this uh, this horse to death. We should do a watch update one of these days. Well, yeah, but I, I'm waiting. My, I was supposed to have a new watch arrive yesterday. You know what the only issue is with you wanting to show one watch per video? Yeah. It means you have to buy so many watches. I also, know, I'm looking forward to follow it. my dad on Instagram. Uh, I'll put up a, his latest post was his new uh, watch box. What is it called? It's a watch box. Okay. A box of watches. A, a better than a box of rocks. <laughs> Remember when I got you that for your birthday? A box of rocks? Yeah, you loved it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, follow my dad on Instagram. Watch photos, occasional food photos. Um, definitely, definitely quality content. <laughs> Guaranteed. Find the best. Never mind. Yeah. All right, we're good. Yeah, we're done for today. <laughs>